Hello! I'm Darby. I'm a little obsessed with roller skating. It's become my buoy to sanity during the pandemic. I'm gonna talk about what I wish I knew starting roller skating because there's a lot. <laughs> I started off knowing friggin nothing, friggin nothing. And I have gotten burned so many times through my skate journey where if I had a little bit more wisdom, perhaps I could have sidestepped those issues or accelerated my progress, which I'm sure everyone wants to do, right? How to get better faster is always nice. So I'm gonna talk about it and hopefully it's helpful for you if you're just starting out your skate journey. It's perhaps a little bit intimidating. There's a lot of information that you need to grasp uh, eventually, but I'm gonna talk about the sequence and probably things that you shouldn't worry about right away, but to keep in mind down the line when you encounter them. And it's gonna be helpful, I promise. So stay tuned. So first thing, if you are new to skating, then you probably aren't aware that there's actually a lot of different kinds of roller skating. At least I was not aware of this. So broad strokes, roller skating is the four by four wheels. <laughs> You've probably seen them around. They're kind of like the retro looking skates. And there is artistic skating, which looks a lot like figure skating. If you've ever gone ice skating before, it's those really technical quick spins jumps such as axles, sow cows, etc. I'm assuming I'm saying sow cow right, I don't know. So that's the first one. It's a really old version of skating, very technical. So if you pursue that kind of skating, it will likely be under the supervision of a coach. That is not a kind of skating I would recommend learning on your own. It deals with a lot of momentum and requires a very high degree of athleticism. So just jumping into that unsupervised and without a progression of drills to get you to spins, to jumps, to etc. I, I would not recommend that. So um, that's something to consider, but it is really beautiful. And especially if you see skaters like Nicole Fior, who's also on YouTube, she's incredible. I stalk everything she does. Um, she does more artistic type skating. She's also a coach, also offers online services. So check her out if you want to learn more about artistic skating. Another artistic skater is Kim Manning Space Queen, who is a badass, so entertaining to watch, so informative in her, like, I don't know how she packs so much information into 30 seconds. She has a talent, um, but she's another really helpful account for any kind of skating too. She, she's an artistic skater, but I have learned so much from her as just a regular, regular Joe, regular Jane uh, in skating. Jill? I don't know. <laughs> Let's go with Jill. So another type of skating, you have park skating, which is, you know, when you see skateboarders at the parks, they have the bowls that you can drop into. Um, they're different kind of parks. There's pump tracks, there's rails, there's stairs, there's blah, blah, blah. There's a ton. That's a world that I am not too familiar with. I've only been to two skate parks in my life. Um, I respect people that do it. It looks really hard. It is really hard in my experience. Um, and that that's an incredible sport as well. I'm trying to think of park skaters that I follow that I like really respect <laughs> or aesthetically or interesting. Um, there are a few. I'll I'll drop some park skaters down into the, the doobly-doo. Um, there are a lot of people that do park skating. So another kind of skating, you have street skating. Street skating is where you basically go out into some kind of urban setting and you just navigate the sidewalk and try not to get hit by cars. Try not to hit pedestrians. Try not to piss off too many bicyclists or those motorized scooters. They drive me nuts. Yeah, you see you see a lot of cool skaters. Like, I think one is called dev to me on Instagram. He has the coolest street skating videos, right? Where they just go really fast on the sidewalk. And I'm giving that its own category because it's kind of a different skill set than trail skating. They're similar, they're similar. But 
Trail skating, I would say, is more like designated areas that are like bike paths intended for wheels. Um, so more like distance skating, I would say. So street skating involves things like being able to navigate curves, jump over, jump over things, um, navigate traffic, stop, <laughs> navigate pedestrians. It has a it has a skill set that is a little bit different than trail skating, which tends to have less stops is more just continuous, you need to be able to go straight, but hopefully you have good form that you're not gonna like hurt your knees over time, which is the thing apparently. Um, so a little different. I would say trail skating is more about endurance and uh, street skating is almost like applying park skating principles to like urban environments kind of, kind of feel. I don't know, this is just what I've seen. I don't think this is an official designation. It's more just like, I've gone street skating, I've gone trail skating before, and this was kind of, it's my hot take. It's my hot take on the difference. The last category I'm gonna talk about is dance skating. And this is the one that has, by and large, captured my soul. It, I love it so much. And even though it gives me so much pain, so much knee aches, a good amount of grief, I just, I can't not do it. I love dancing, I love music, I love the aesthetic, and you know what? I love, I love the people who are also in love with this thing. Um, you know, not everyone is as welcoming, but for the most part, people are really, for the most part, people are really welcoming and sweet. And yeah, dance skating is actually a huge umbrella term. From what I know, from what I know, it's the broadest umbrella term, and in that you have a lot of different styles of dance skating. Um, it's very provincial, so every region in the US and worldwide has their own distinct dance skating style. You have jam skating, rhythm skating, you have groove skating, slow walking, a, a distinct uh, Chicago JB style, which is based on the music of James Brown. There's a uh, snapping where they just like they use each other and they go around really fast on one foot. It's crazy to watch. Uh, so there's there's a lot of absolutely fascinating and beautiful and distinct styles of dance skating, um, which is really fun to learn about. It's the thing that I love the most. When I skate, like I'm usually listening to music and like working on my technical dance skills. But yeah, be be aware of the categories. Why do I bring up the different types of skating? Because as a beginner, your process of practicing where you skate, what kind of equipment you get, um, especially the kinds of skates, is all gonna depend on what kind of skating you do. I will be contacted by friends who know that my personality has been consumed by skating, and they'll ask, I wanna get skates. What kind of skates should I get? Or, <laughs> or I want to learn to skate. How do I do it? You know, th things of that nature, right? The how and the what. And it all depends, right? What kind of skates you get, where you skate, who you skate with, what resources you draw upon to learn how to skate, all depend on what kind of skating you want to do. So I think a good rule of thumb is do a little bit of upfront research. If you're just starting skating and you're not really sure what appeals to you yet, follow a bunch of accounts, like poke around, see what's out there, see what's possible for skating. And more than likely, like you will see something and it'll stick or it'll, it'll capture your fascination. And maybe that's a direction to go. And there's a lot of skaters who do multiple disciplines. Skating are like a, a triple threat. Um, they're not mutually exclusive, but if there is one that really resonates with you and what you want to get out of skating, you can gear your equipment towards that and that'll save you money in the long run and it'll also make it easier. So equipment really matters. I, I've paid my dues to learn this lesson that equipment makes a really big difference what kind of skates you have, what kind of wheels, what kind of bearings, what kind of bushings, uh, how tight your trucks are, how stiff your boot is, how high your boot is, like all of these factors will change how you ride. 
in your skates, how it feels, what kinds of things are more feasible, more available to you as movements, um, and even the kind of balance that's required to execute something. So it's something that you probably will not get super deep into when you're early on, but think about, think about what you want to do in terms of skating, in terms of what your ideal skate outcome is, what your skate goals are, and then get the right skates for that. So if you like park skating, get a plate that is sturdy enough to do park skating. A metal plate to be more durable in the parks, of course, just starting out, if you're not doing a ton of jumping, it might not be as big an issue. Um, but I don't know. If you eventually know that that's what you want to do, it might not be that much more to invest upfront. might save you a lot of money down the line. Another thing, know the basics of what every single part of your skate does. And this took me too long to actually pay attention to and read up on. I didn't really think about it for the first three months of skating and I was skating on vintage skates from the 1970s that I found in my aunt's closet. These were the very skates that my aunt used to roll around Venice in in the 1970s and they were rusted to shit and the, the bearings were completely shot the bushings were rotten and the wheels, I should, if I was smart, I would just go grab this and show you because the wheels, I, I'm going to make another video about it too. The wheels were different sizes on one skate versus the other and then the front and the back, but just on, just on the right skate. <laughs> so it was like totally uneven to get any kind of power required like twice as much force as it should have. Um, which I didn't know at the time because I had no point of reference, no point of comparison. That was all I knew in terms of skates. But I would get so tired and my feet were torn to bits because these skates required so much, so much pressure to actually push off to go. Um, and it, I mean, it was kind of a nightmare. Like I had bloody feet <laughs> for a good month and a half um, and, and really sensitive calluses as well. And it wasn't until finally I took it into a skate shop to replace the wheels and they looked it over and were like, this is, this is ridiculous. This is not safe. And I, I did stupid things like hill bomb in these, these 1970s vintage skates, which is so dumb because equipment matters. Now they were kind of, for the most part, pretty reasonable slopes. Like I was not going on some like double black diamond grade slope, pretty moderate terrain, and it was not high traffic terrain. So it wasn't as stupid as it could have been, but I was going down parking structures. I was going down hills. I just don't recommend it. Like you don't have control. You don't have the kind of control that you should. Finally, I took it into the skate shop and replaced the wheels, got new bearings, got new bushings and it made a world of difference. And I'm telling you, it was as if I progressed three months overnight, right? Like I had, I had been progressing like pretty incrementally up until that point, but just changing the equipment, just making it to have proper specifications and actually just be a functioning skate literally caused me to improve as if you just like some being downloaded this knowledge into my brain overnight. And the same thing also happened when I finally loosened my trucks after about three months. And it was just like it clicked, like all the movements like made sense, right? And, and when I'm talking about the trucks, hopefully you'll learn about this. It's the part that the wheels attach to that you put pressure on to turn. So you compress this side and then the truck will cause cause these two to create a little semicircle, and then you'll turn that way. Um, and having different different tightnesses of the trucks causes causes very distinct experiences for the ride. So starting out, most skates that come out of the box will be very tight because it is the most stable thing, and often beginners want a tighter truck because it's easier to balance on. Um, especially just going straight. 
who's going forward. And at some point, you'll be comfortable going forward, comfortable balancing, and you want to make it a little bit easier to turn. If the experience is that you're trying to turn and you feel like you're really forcing it and your foot is not following where your brain is telling your foot to go, might be time to loosen your trucks. And the way to loosen the trucks is to do it a quarter at a time. Just one quarter at a time and you're going to want to test it in between and you're going to want to make sure that you do a uniform tightness on all of the trucks on both skates. Otherwise, you're going to find that it's a little bit asymmetric, which is not ideal because people have a dominant side anyways. You don't want to exacerbate that problem. So know how tight your trucks are. Check because it will change as you ride them. Do this semi-regularly, maybe once a month. You have bearings, which are these little circles that are the thing that pop into the wheel that then is put onto the bar that attaches to the truck. Um, that is gonna need to be cleaned because things like dirt, sand, debris, moisture get in there and make the wheel turn less smoothly. So that's another thing, avoid dirt, avoid sand. If you see water, avoid it at all costs. Step over it, jump over it if you can do so safely um, or take a different route. And if it's raining, I don't recommend skating because you want to protect your bearings unless you're rolling in dough and you can buy a billion different bearings and that's no problem for you. I am not. I have to protect those puppies, protect them. So stop is that big rubber pad on, on your skate. It helps for stopping. There will be a point if you dance skate that you will want to take your toe stop off. It is not that scary. It is not that scary. People, I think, make a much bigger deal about it than it is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just don't worry about it. What people do is they will take that big rubber pad and they'll replace it with a tiny little rubber pad called a jam stop that just protects the front of the skate and lets you do cool footwork on the floor, cool floor work. Um, so, yeah, just swap it out. They're both fairly inexpensive, ballpark around seven-ish dollars, I want to say. So don't worry too much about that. Definitely get comfortable with your toe stops. <laughs> if you are a lady, a gentleman, a non-binary person with, with a mane of hair, I don't even care how long it is. If you are shedding hair and you try to skate inside, <laughs> if you have floors to do so, or you get one of those wood wood squares wood planks wood uh, but there's got to be a good word for that tiles wood tile it sounds wrong anyways if you get a wood tile or you have hardwood floors to begin with then you're gonna get hair all up in your wheels it's gonna be really gross it's gonna look like some kind of disgusting monster crawled into your wheel and you're gonna try to turn it and it's not going to want to budge or it's gonna drastically slow down the rotations. Take the wheel off, take the hair out, clean, clean that shit, um, and then put the wheel back. And you'll wanna put the wheel back and make sure that it has motion on, on this plane, on I'll call it the XY plane, and that it is not excessive motion on, we'll call it the Z plane, right? You don't want it sliding horizontally on the truck, <laughs> um, but you want it to freely rotate on the X, XY plane. Sorry if that's a clunky explanation of that, but just be wary of the hair. Just maybe sweep before you skate. Maybe this is a, a problem of I'm just lazy and don't sweep before I skate every time and I shed a lot, probably oversharing this, but I'm blessed with an excess of hair, <laughs> so I shed a lot. Sorry if that is disgusting. It's important though. It's something that I didn't figure out until probably too late. It's one of those things. 
there's definitely a lot more nuance into types of skates, what's going to be the right fit for you. It also largely comes down to preference. Maybe it's disingenuous to say, like, think about the right skate for you. If you have a strong idea of what kind of skating you want to do, think about the right skate for you. If you're coming into this not really sure what you're going to gravitate towards and just kind of wanting to try out wheels, um, probably just starting with a starter skate and then gradually ramping up into something else, realizing that that's going to be an initial investment and maybe you'll transition to a better quality skate at some point um, because your skate does make a big difference. But also, it's hard to commit, you know, it's hard to get that deep in financially into something that you're not totally dedicated to yet. So I get it. Just assess your situation, assess your preferences. Um, keep in mind that if you get a starter skate, you're probably going to want to upgrade fairly soon, fairly soon, you know, depending on how much you're doing it on your dedication. It all depends. It all depends. So anyways. Let's get, let's keep cracking.